Pablo Picasso said it best. Sophistication is the greatest enemy of imagination. Sophistication is our parents knew it is gone. With the internet, everything is changing so fast that slang and colloquialisms are as valid as the King's English. In fact, slang represents freedom from pretension, leaving artists to function as they please. It's been called lowbrow, pop surrealism, but it's a feral art and it's an art that raised itself in the wilderness. That's a quote from today's guest, Robert Williams. When speaking of his own work, he said, my paintings compete with television and video games and emotionally, this painting will hold its own. His work was reviled and dismissed by the art world for decades and he was perpetually the outsider whose undeniable skill and creativity had such a cultural impact that eventually the art world in crowd had to acknowledge and extend their bounds to encompass his genre and astounding body of work. One of the seminal members of uh, the group that started Zap Comics, uh, hot rod artist for Ed Big Daddy Roth, founder of Juxtapose Magazine, and featured artist at the Whitney Biennial in 2010. He's now exhibited through Tony Schifrazi Gallery and currently part of the show of Autodidactic, the Juxtapose School that runs through June 2019 at the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles. He's been called the heathen in art's hallowed ground. Today's guest is the great Robert Williams. quick backtracking on you yourself you had said at one point that if you had been accepted right after art school that you would have been pulled into mire and never gone anywhere in life but it's the fact that you had to fight off to the side and create your own audience that made the difference in the end well, also... I, I, I i don't know how much you know about uh, I, um, art history and uh What's happening on the West Coast and underground comics mm -hmm. and the psychedelic posters? I, I, how well versed are you on all this stuff? Decently so, and I've been trying to read and watch anything I could get related to you and uh, have been studying on it. I'm intrigued by the fact that it seems like you were you were a person kind of born out of time of the styles that were in vogue in many ways, too. Um, well, you got that right. Yeah. The now, whole... I, I wasn't the only one. Mm -hmm. There was a number of artists that, uh, that that had graphic skills that just certainly didn't fit in with the fine arts world. What uh, what intrigues me is you you kind of it's funny I was reading how uh, you you had finally been able to accomplish and congratulations to do that show in the same place that Salvador Dali did his and I've thought for the yeah. longest I've thought for the longest time God dang you were more Salvador Dali than Salvador Dali uh, I thought in many ways that. For Dolly, there was always this kind of quality of showmanship and this kind of mental uh, kind of gymnastics and uh, kind of his apparitions that he did, whereas you just kind of blew past the barriers and didn't excuse yourself and kept going. Well, I don't know how much you know about the history of surrealism, but, you know, Salvador Dolly got kicked out of the surrealist movement early on, and he become kind of a self-promoter and he unfortunately in, in, he eclipsed his own talents with with promotion okay okay he had a remarkable imagination and very skillful but uh, unfortunately in the art world you got to perpetuate your name and perpetuating your name is far more important than the substance of what you do mm -hmm. so D D dolly become a clown kind of a uh, a buffoon of his own self for most of his life. Mm -hmm. So you have to look past this ass goofball and see what <laughs> what he really did. And you know, and, uh, he <clears throat> what killed him was the abstract expressionist movement after the Second World War. Yeah. yeah, and then after that, he just had to start trying to tread water as much as he could, any way he could, to promote himself. Yeah. You know? It just got more pathetic and more pathetic, and he yeah. tried to tie in with the, the psychedelic movement and whatever come along. And yeah. it, was just, it was kind of a yeah. sad testimony to someone that uh, uh, was a remarkable person. Indeed. You know? it, he, he had a lot of shallow characteristics about his personality. You know, he was a, a, a neo-fascist. You know, he supported uh, Franco and... Uh, he, he he made some racist statements that uh, uh, come out that Andrew Breton, the founder of Surrealism, pointed out. He'd become an enemy of Andrew Breton after a while. And so Breton brought up some 
quote quotes about Dolly. That uh, Dolly said that the only people that should rule the world were the Spanish, and yeah. he just made a lot of stupid remarks that he could just kept his mouth shut and just painted. I don't know. I got off on a sidetrack here. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm that's quite a, that, that's quite all right. No, I was going <laughs> to actually ask you'd mentioned abstract expressions. I always wondered so many articles, articles had come out recently over the fact that how actually the CIA had been subsidizing art shows. Yeah, that's right. For, You're right about that. that yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that book come out about 10 years ago. I forget the woman. I got the book. Yeah. You know the the CIA after World War II uh, they they tried to get rid of uh, uh, social realism and they did and you, you can understand uh, uh, abstract expressionism is probably the most bohemian drug infested uh, homosexual form of culture there is and the CIA is promoting it <laughs> is that, you know it's it's kind of a an oxymoron that they would uh, do yes. that, but it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting contradiction. Yes. Yeah, but uh, abstract expressionism was a, was a very legitimate uh, and honorable form of art, but the problem was you, you, you didn't have to have much of a skill level for it. I mean, I've seen abstract expressionists be very successful after two semesters, you know, and start making money, but. Uh, uh, um, everyone become abstract expressionists in the '60s, and mm -hmm. so you know they had to, 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 to gain that favor. They had to <clears throat> um, really run down craftsmanship. On uh, there, there, there was two um, uh, art writers, critics in New York, uh, um, Clement Greenberg and Harold Rosenberg, were really the forefront of. Mm -hmm. Uh, ushering in abstract expressionism. And then a little after that, uh, Walter Hopps uh, brought uh, abstract expressionism to the West Coast, where I had to struggle with it. And later, years later, I got become, I become very good friends with Walter Hopps, and I had to explain to him how he fucked me on bringing <laughs> abstract expressionism to the West Coast. Uh, if you're interested in art history, you should under, you should find out who Walter Hopps is. Yes, he was sir. one of the top people in the world. and. Uh, he made all the big artists on the West Coast, Ed Ruscha and Billy Al Bankston, Ed Keenholz. And mm -hmm. He was the first guy to give Andy Warhol a show, and he brought um, uh, Marcel Duchamp uh, back to the United States as, uh, after decades and decades wow. and gave him a show. A very, very important person. Before he died, uh, Walter was designated in Europe as the top museum curator in the world. Wow. There's, a, there's a book out on him. I suggest that you look. If you're interested in art culture, yes, sir. you might want to look up the book called The Dream Colony. About It's called The Dream Colony, Walter Hopps. And okay. You can get it through Amazon. And it'll give you a real good understanding of American art culture. Well, uh, Walter Hopps is a very good friend of mine. And... Uh, he had a Zap show at the uh, Corker Museum in uh, uh, 1971. Wow. You can imagine. If, if, I don't know how familiar you are with Zap Comics. but Wow, uh, in 71? Yeah, in 71 at Ooh. the Corcoran Museum. So he's kind of so the same. And Zap had only come out since 68. Yeah. So <clears throat> you can see uh, how progressive Walter was. So he was another right. character that also surfed the edge of the art world, much like yourself. And uh, he did. Beyond. He did. He had a drug problem, and he was a true bohemian, and he knew everybody in the world. It was important. Wow. He was well respected. He was one of the premier characters of the 20th century. He he started the Ferris Gallery, the most famous gallery on the West Coast. Uh, you'd mentioned but crack. anyway, he was part and parcel of this package. I got off subject again. No, that's quite all right. <laughs> you'd mentioned abstract expressionist and and craft, and it brought to mind. I was I remember reading Robert Irwin, and he had said at one point in one of his books, he said that that the most overlooked American art form is car craft. It's hot rods. Like you have no, yeah. <clears throat> which you yeah, I got a show. I'm I'm in a big show right now at the Peterson Auto Museum. Uh, the juxtapose show, Yay. and it's just uh, some of the best artists in the country from Juxtapose Magazine are in this show at the Peterson Museum. If you get out to the West Coast, it's going to be going for nine months, and you should catch this show. Definitely. Uh, it just it struck me that if if the CIA wanted to find an archetypal American art form for everyone to be envious of and to outdo kind of the sophisticates, that car craft could have been a great start. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's right, the automotive community. But you have a drawback with the automotive community, and they lean a little bit to the right. Uh-huh. See? Okay. They're, they're the most talented people and got an enormous amount of imagination, but they lean a little bit to the right. Yes, sir. And <clears throat> the orthodox uh, are, well, just slobbers and wallers and extreme left. Mm-hmm. So you don't have like a middle ground there of, uh, you know, to work with. Interesting. So, you know, like the, 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 the art community is so concerned about political correctness and social movements that you, you, it's, they're, they've crippled themselves. They've impacted themselves, mm-hmm. you know, of what you can show. <laughs> like in your lifetime, you might see the end. You might never see another nude again. I mean, it's just <clears> – <throat> Yeah. There's a social movement just to stop nude painting, you know. So yeah, I was going to ask about that. You've you've been able to watch the pendulum swing a lot. It, are we at a point where the pendulum? Well, they haven't swung. It's drugged me along with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's beat me to death. <clears throat> uh, my apologies. <laughs> Have you seen it as extreme as what we're at now? Has it ever felt this extreme? No, it, it hasn't. And I, I remember in, in the 60s, I had to worry about uh, uh, right wing authoritarianism. You know, like over 400 people went to jail selling Zap comics. But now in the 70s, when the 70s come along, I started getting more pressure from the feminist. Wow. And so, you know, it's just no winning, no winning at all. Yes, sir. Your work has uh, has unashamedly pointed to drives that we all have, and you've pointed out that food could be just as lurid as sex. And we're at a strange time now where it seems like uh, we're supposed to cerebral in some cerebral fashion. We're supposed to leap all those and end up in a better place. Uh, well, what I can't figure out is you're selling maps and you're asking me all these intellectual <laughs> questions. I, you know, so, uh, sorry, sir. I don't. Uh, <clears throat> Have you ever have, have you ever looked at early early maps from like the 1500s of the West Coast where they couldn't figure out where uh, where the Spanish couldn't figure out where the Baja Peninsula ended? They thought it was a fucking island. Yeah. Did you, did you ever look at those? We have a we have a number of those. The uh, the instance of that whole perception uh, holding on for about a hundred years. Matter of fact, there was even a guy that testified to I think the King of England that he said it it is an island. I sailed around it. Uh, just amazing. really oh yeah oh yeah matter of fact i still have the the concerning thing for me is we now have more young people that come in that are unabashedly flat earthers or are unabashedly sure that there's a conspiracy about something going on in the north pole the grown adults with uh, able to drive uh, making complete sentences that are pretty sure that we're in some state of conspiracy uh, about the shape of the planet which is is just astounding. <clears throat> well, you know, I think they took a poll and discovered seventy five percent of the population believe in ghosts. Yeah. So you know, uh, indeed. I don't know what to tell you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Real quick, before I forget, uh, the uh, the mystery map of the Asinine Atoll. Uh, you had done it years ago for Zap. I think it was in seventy seven. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And can you do you remember anything as to why uh, doing a map came up? As a premise, yeah, because I was always fascinated by cartology, uh, okay. you know, and it's uh, diag- over diagramming things, you know. And uh, what if you took that skill of uh, cartology and you made it absolutely asinine? So if you look at that map, it's uh, it's like one shape, and then you look down the, the bottom, and it's uh, interpreted another shape. Did you see that yes, on sir. that map? Yes, that I did. And then I pointed to all these places where these remarkable situations are indicated no mm-hmm. and uh, there, there are some things that are uh, common to all of us and there's some things that are a little more un- a little more uncommon but you uh, you kind of cast a span of how somebody might think of themselves but also think about kind of their interior life uh, in a sense in the same way it's amazing beautiful work do you know how big of a run they were or how many were done well, it was Zap Comics. It was a center spread in Zap Comics, <clears throat> and then I, ha- I had a bunch of them run off. I had, you know, like maybe five hundred okay. or 
thousand ran off on stock on on uh, they were printed brown brown ink on uh, oatmeal colored That's beige right. paper and then that when you fold them like do the map fold they really had a nice character to them you know and I. would yeah, that's that's what I actually have in hand at the moment. Is I have one of I have one of the uh, the ones on the uh, oatmeal paper. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful work. Yeah, well, I had those in a map fold, you know, and then you just open it up. Then it had all those creases like a real map, and that really added to the character. Oh wow, See? that's a great premise. That's a great premise. I cannot thank you enough for your time, and um, thank you for everything you've done. Um, I'm, there's a, okay. There's a lot okay. Of- a lot of well, I hope you sell a lot of maps. I'll do my best and uh, hope to see you someday in California, sir. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Our thanks to the wonderful Robert Williams. It's a great chance to chat and learn. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Feel free to reach out to us at newprojectionscast at gmail.com, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thanks.